Hello, this is Blas Pairi from Valencia, and I am going to present a study on 248 uh, screen dance festivals. I say 248 and counting because like two weeks ago it was still 230 and uh, I keep discovering new festivals uh, every time. So let's start with the geographic and time distribution. And as you see, I have grouped the festivals into four main regions. And we see that uh, there is uh, a steady increase in uh, festivals. So in the 90s and early 2000 years, there is no, there is kind of a stability. And recently uh, there has been really a, a huge increase uh, every year. And as uh, today, uh, that's that's say 2017-18, we have 154 active uh, festivals. We can see that uh, uh, this increase in festivals is not a linear uh, addition, but uh, we have many festivals that appear and that uh, disappear. For instance, in this uh, graphic, we can see that at some periods of time, new festivals have been uh, uh, created. And uh, like recently, in 2016, it was in Europe where many uh, new festivals sprang. And uh, in uh, 2017, it was USA and Canada that had the major increase. So if we, we see, for instance, uh, in 2016, we had new uh, 40 new festivals, and in uh, in this recent year, 39 uh, and counting uh, new festivals have appeared. But at the same time, for instance, um, 18 festivals didn't make it from uh, 2016 to the next year. So to summarize uh, these data. We have an average lifespan of about four and a half uh, years and uh, mostly the activity has been distributed in Europe, which is almost a half of the years uh, of festival activity, then uh, uh, North America with uh, one third and then we have 17% for Latin America and uh, what is somehow surprising is that Asia and the rest of the world has had uh, very little activity in comparison. So if we take a look at uh, the distribution per country, where we can see that uh, the USA has had uh, and still has um, most of the festival activity. And historically, they have had uh, very important uh, festivals. And then uh, we have Spain, UK, and uh, Italy. Uh, surprisingly, somehow for its size, Greece comes before uh, Germany or France in, uh, in the quantity of uh, festival uh, activity. And uh, this is important because somehow uh, there is a slight correlation between uh, festival activity and a screen dance uh, production, at least uh, in quantity. So let's talk about uh, money. So if we go to the fees, we can see that uh, in uh, North America, that's USA, Canada, uh, most of the festivals charge a submission fee just to send the, the work. And in the rest of the world, it's predominantly free. So this is really a cultural uh, gap uh, that uh, divides um, well, North America from most of the other countries. And if we take a look at uh, uh, the festivals that are the most expensive uh, fee-wise, we see that all of them are in the USA and Canada, and even recent uh, festivals like have uh, just one year, the first year, like uh, Los Angeles Dance Film Festival or uh, this one in Vancouver, 
uh, start uh, the first year already charging a lot of uh, money to send uh, the work. So let's go now to a more qualitative uh, description. And I propose to start with the models of uh, screen dance that uh, I have found. And uh, if we refer to the uh, classical distinction uh, that applies for film festivals, they divide it into business-oriented and audience-oriented. Audience-oriented is more uh, for the people that go there just to watch new m movies or uh, I know niche uh, uh, genres, whereas business oriented are uh, the main uh, festivals. I don't know, like Cannes, uh, Venice, or Sundance, where uh, films are shown and selected in order to reach uh, TV uh, programmers, uh, producers, and the industry. But the problem is that we don't have a real industry uh, for uh, for screen dance. So what really applies better for uh, screen dance is institution-led versus artist-led. So and this uh, influences uh, the whole uh, functioning of uh, of the festivals. Uh, for instance, <clears throat> in institution-led, uh, the contents often have to be more related to real dance, as often the institutions come from dance. Uh, also, it influences the audience, uh, not only the quantity of audience, but uh, what kind of audience. One of the main questions uh, at the beginning of uh, this uh, uh, study was if uh, the fees determined the lifespan of uh, of uh, screen uh, screen dance festivals and actually it it doesn't it doesn't at all it's even the contrary so let's take a look at uh, the longevity or the lifespan and uh, let's uh, look at some examples uh, for instance um, one uh, important festival which was in london dance on screen which is a typical institution-led uh, festival, just was uh, discontinued because the institution lost interest in screen dance. So the, the institution uh, still does a lot of work in uh, dance, but uh, screen dance just disappeared. We have another case, which is uh, La Mostra de Videodanza, uh, which was uh, led by um, uh, Nuria Font, and in this case, uh, well, it has an institutional support, but uh, also we had the case that uh, uh, Nuria Font uh, well, uh, died, and uh, once you are deceased, it's difficult to maintain uh, the, the festival. And another case which can be interesting is the uh, University of Utah Screen Dance Festival, which uh, is still another model and uh, actually we can add this uh, model to the artist and institution-led because university uh, provides a different uh, setting. You have an audience which often are the students or uh, people related to the university and a production that often is related to what is created at the university. So. Let's uh, have a look at the selection criteria. So a uh, common criterion is the dance as a screen dance as an extension of dance. And that often applies to uh, institution-led uh, festivals that are linked to, to dance. So somehow they want a screen dance for dancers. There is a screen dance as an art form and then there is a specific uh, criterion, which is storytelling. And often in uh, American uh, festivals, which have a high fee, they request explicitly storytelling. Also related to that are the selection goals. It's not the same if you want to make a panorama. Uh, let's say you want to show 
what's going on, the trends in international screen dance. And a very different goal is when you have to select people for a project, uh, in which case you don't look at, uh, for instance, uh, work that has been sent, but you look more at a trajectory or a project description. Uh, there are other goals which uh, can be like to give visibility to a group, uh, for instance, uh, if you are a university festival and you want to show the production of uh, the university. And then uh, there are all the academic uh, studies or teaching. So let's go at uh, processes uh, now. And the most common process is programming from an open call. Another process which is kind of related is cross-programming, where one festival uh, programs uh, works that have been selected by another festival. And also what I have called meta-programming, where uh, you don't have an open call, but you look at other festivals and you select pieces that then you program in your festival. Uh, also, uh, very much related to the open call uh, works, uh, are the systems uh, and the online platforms. And in particular, I, uh, I describe uh, Film Freeway because it's uh, become kind of the standard to uh, to those uh, online platforms uh, and uh, the good thing is that uh, it has a very wide reach and it is free for everyone if the festival keeps it uh, free it doesn't charge any any commission or, or anything so as i say this is a blessing and also a curse. When you get uh, like a tsunami of uh, people sending uh, works, especially if those works are not really relevant to your festival. Let's go now to the presentation uh, part, which is uh, really essential in uh, festivals. So presentation means two things. One is how you show the, the works to the audience, and the other is how you introduce them, how, how you accompany them. Uh, so for the showing part, uh, the cinema style, it's uh, what's the most common way to, to show it. So you have one screen in a dark room with hopefully good sound. And uh, that's, I think, very important to appreciate the screen dance as a, as a film, uh, actually. There is the pure screening where you show the works and you have a session one, session two, and people go from one session to the other. But then you have either the presentation by uh, the artist uh, and uh, uh, you can have a commentary by the programmer or the curator uh, where you give a context or you introduce the works, or you just give a meaning to what you are showing and how you are showing. And this is, I think, very important because uh, it's not the same than uh, like uh, uh, mainstream narrative uh, film festivals, where if uh, people don't understand the story, then uh, there is no need to, to do a presentation. I mean, uh, the film doesn't work. <coughs> Here, uh, especially when we are talking about uh, screen dance as a, an art form, the creative process and the uh, artistic um, process is important to be explained in order for the people to understand uh, the relevance of, of the works and to appreciate them. Uh, and uh, that, that's why I, I do think that uh, uh, festivals need to to really have a commentary and an, an exchange with uh, the audience much more than uh, regular film festivals. So finally, what is the role of uh, festivals? The main uh, role is to discover and enjoy new new works, uh, and also for artists is to create a community 
and uh, uh, probably one side role that ha that festivals have taken is to provide the academic commentary as there is no uh, an independent uh, critique uh, uh, system uh, for screen dance. Also, something that Bourdieu calls the symbolic uh, capital, which uh, actually it's uh, kind of uh, building your uh, CV or asking for new uh, uh, new grants to, to create uh, screen dance. Uh, so the fact that you have been selected in many festivals, it's kind of a proof that uh, your work is appreciated and uh, has uh, a quality. Um, so some things to improve in uh, in festivals would be the information. Uh, so especially information on past uh, selections. And uh, in many festivals, important festivals that, uh, for instance, have disappeared, we have no information whatsoever on the, f on the works that were selected uh, there. And this means that part of the history of uh, screen dance gets uh, lost as we, we miss works that maybe are uh, really relevant. And uh, along with the information is displaying works online and uh, and one good example of a screen dance uh, festival that provides information is uh, Fever, as they uh, they give information on uh, their awards and uh, they provide the videos uh, that can be watched of the uh, pieces that have been selected and that uh, people can online uh, watch at any time. So that's uh, about it and thank you for watching.